Good morning. Hallelujah. Jesus is risen. Welcome to our virtual worship service here on Pentecost Sunday, 10 days after Jesus' uh, ascension, and Penti for 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. The Lord be with you. Great to have you join us. And if you're joining us as a guest or visitor, another welcome to you. I look forward to meeting you and getting to know you in person or first on uh, FaceTime, Skype, Facebook Live. Let's do it. I want to meet you. For those of you who are new among us, if you'd like to follow along with the materials posted, please scroll down in Vimeo or YouTube to see the link to our website. That will give you access to our worship materials. Of prime concern is the link to the bulletin as well as to the welcome card. The kid's sermon is available on a separate video. No Clara the Sheepdog today, but you and I are singing a happy birthday and we'll hear the wind and hear a baby cry during the kid's message. Uh, the worship folder contains a bunch of other materials, including for Sunday school announcements and so on. So let's get our materials together for worship and head to the Lord's presence. And now, we join together in praise, prayer, and hearing God's words of challenge and comfort. Let's begin in the name of the Father, who loved us so much that he sent his Son to suffer and die for you, and of the Son, who rose triumphantly over the grave and vanquished evil and death, and of the Holy Spirit, who strengthens and comforts you during these days of uncertainty. Amen. And now... To lead us in the opening praise, here's the praise band. Down. 
let it fall Let it fall Let it fall We welcome you with praise We welcome you with praise Almighty God of love We welcome you in this place We welcome you with praise Yes, we are here for each other and for our visitors and certainly here for you, Lord, to worship you. We welcome you with praise. Church, please take a moment to reflect on your life of love before we head to the great forgiver in confession. We together confess. God of reconciliation, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and deny your strong presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven, and so we live now in the hope that does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for the word of the Lord. Good morning. The first reading for today is read from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. 
Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear now the good news according to the Apostle John, the son of Zebedee, the one who dashed to meet, meet the risen Lord after he heard of his appearance. The seventh chapter of his account beginning at the 37th verse. On the last day of the festival of booths, the great day, while Jesus was standing in the temple, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This indeed is the gospel of the Lord, which fires up the Pentecost hearts within us. Thanks be to God for his teachings and for his bountiful grace. And now as we prepare our hearts for the hearing of the message, we join in singing the hymn of the day.
Grace to you, mercy, peace, and hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what language does God speak? Think about that for a second. The Bible has records of many stories when people heard God speak. And speaking of God speaking again, in what actual language did he speak? We obviously worship this morning in English, the King's English, not Old English or Middle English. We use a widely used English translation of Scripture, the New Revised Standard Version. Sometimes we'll mix in the English Standard Version, the New International Version, and a bit of the King James Version. Speaking of which, during my youth, I remember many churches that still primarily use the King James Version, the KJV, which sounds like thou which art and whithersoever thou goest. And here's another interesting point about Christianity. It's the only major world religion that doesn't make people learn the language of its founder. Did you know that? And do you know what language Jesus primarily spoke? Well, here's an image of Acts 2, our first reading for today in one of the original manuscripts. The New Testament was written in the Koine Greek, not classical Greek, but the biblical Greek. So Jesus must have preached in Greek, correct? Nope. Greek was a common language back in those days, just as English or Spanish is today. So scholars say maybe that's why Greek was used for the New Testament. Okay. So since Jew Jesus was a Jewish man, he must have spoken Hebrew, correct? Nope. Jesus spoke a common language of the time, Aramaic, and that's settled, not disputed. And this is a bit of Aramaic. I know, you're thinking, it's all Greek to me, and you would be quite humorous if you said that. Now, another interesting point is that none of the original scripture is written in Aramaic. In other words, every word that we have ever read about Jesus is a translation of the original message. Intriguing. Language is an intriguing phenomenon. Just how many languages are spoken today? Yikes. And then there are so many Creole languages as well, based on other languages and dialects, very well-defined and very different uh, structures of languages. English itself has many derivative dialects and Creole. Now, some of you have told me that you speak a Creole language. Well, one, for instance, is Hawaiian pidgin. And here are some definitions of pidgin terms. Of course, language isn't just about words. It is as much about culture and history and background and customs, traditions and nonverbal cues and situational context as it is about letters on a page. So today is Pentecost. Today we remember an amazing miracle of language. The Holy Spirit shows up in a very powerful way. The disciples stand up in front of a crowd and talk about Jesus. Now this crowd was an interesting group of people too. They were Jewish people, so they had that in common. But they were from every region of the Roman Empire. They were from the ends of the earth. What does that mean? Well, for one thing, they spoke many different languages. So the disciples are standing up there. And then the miracle happens. Everyone in the crowd heard their words in their own languages. So I asked the question again, what language does God speak? For each person heard the message from God in his or her own language. And people have been trying to explain this amazing event at Pentecost since the day it happened almost 2,000 years ago. So yes, on the day of Pentecost, God sent the Holy Spirit down to draw people from all corners of the earth, to unite them into one group and show them the ladder of Jesus that they could climb to escape the dark world and be united with God again. The Holy Spirit showed us how. Through Jesus, we could be with God. So the Holy Spirit came on this day of Pentecost. We focus today on two aspects of that. One, what language did the Spirit speak? Acts 2, 8 says that each person heard the message in their own 
tongue. That is, God reaching out to each person within that person's native culture, within that person's native language, and met that person there specifically. Second, where did God bring the people? Did God bring the people all together to be reunited in one language and one culture? No. The people heard the message and took it back to their own countries, in their own languages. You see, God's mission is not to form a single, earthly, uniform culture, but the mission is found in verse 21. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. As human beings, our natural tendency is to live life in fear. We tend to construct walls around ourselves. We like to gather with people who speak our own language. That's safe. Generally, we want to keep everyone else out. That's our instinct. Fear the other. Fear the unknown. But when we learn another language, we find that it reveals so much about various cultures, history, ways of life. And that enriches our lives, enhances communication and learning, broadens our perspective, even helps us draw closer to God. And the reaching out with the gospel certainly becomes more advanced through various languages and cultures. But generally, whether we live here or in another country, we start with distrust. And even though English is well accepted throughout the world, probably more than any other language, it's the lingua franca right now, use of another language, even English, often invites suspicion, fear. And since we tend to be self-serving and forget that God is the giver of life, we also forget that God is the provider of languages and communication and art and music and culture. And it is in God's name that we are praising not ours. It is God who has created the marvelous salad bowl of variety. It is God who has given us this wonderful smorgasbord of life. Now the Jews were forgetting that in Jesus' day. They had walled themselves off from the Gentiles and thought that the mission of God was to get people to come inside the walls of Israel in order to be saved. In fact, sometimes the Jews didn't even want to invite the Gentiles inside their walls at that time. Pentecost reminds us that God's mission moves in the opposite direction. God is a giver of life and has created all good things and continues to create and sustain all things. The mission of God is not to get everyone to look and act and speak exactly the same. But we do remember that it is God's name that is to get the glory, not ours. For we are striving for unity, not uniformity. Christians have often hoped for a time when our racial and economic differences would cease. When in Christ we would all be indistinguishable. Such impulses are earnest, but fundamentally misguided, not sound. Many such interpretations emerge from a fervent hope that the specters of racism and sexism and myriad other destructive isms would no longer bind us to cycles of violence and hate. Many such interpretations emerge from a misreading of texts like Galatians 3.28. Such misreadings imagine that becoming Christian means becoming all the same in all ways, that there are no ethnic differences between us, no longer Jew or Greek, says Galatians. No differences of class and status between us. No longer slave or free. No gender differences between us either. No longer male and female, says Galatians. But that is not the truth that God teaches in that epistle. Galatians teaches that in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Galatians 3.26. Our adoption as a Children of God, however, does not erase our differences. We aren't the same, but we're reminded that our differences are not ways to measure our value in the eyes of God and one another. 
And the story of Pentecost in Acts 2 helps us understand how God sees human diversity. One of God's greatest gifts to the world. At Pentecost, God, through the Spirit, does not erase our differences, but embraces the fact that God has made us all so wonderfully different while we share in many commonalities and the unifying gospel message. The final chapters of the Gospel of Luke and the first chapters of Acts find the disciples and other followers of Jesus regrouping and discerning what a life of faith together looks like after Jesus' death resurrection, and ascension. Both at the end of the Gospel of Luke and again at the beginning of Acts, Jesus promises that he would bestow this gathered community with the gift of the Spirit. And we hear that in Luke 24 and also in Acts 1. And the gift arrives in grand style. That's what happens at Pentecost. God, through the Spirit, chooses to meet us where we are, each and every one of us. In the midst of a multitude of languages and experiences, the Spirit translates the gospel instantly into myriad tongues. Now, you can't just substitute one word in one language for a corresponding word in another language. Language just doesn't work that way. Language is multi-layered, subtle, intricate. Language is rooted in a wider and complex culture and way of thinking and living. Even when we speak the same language, don't we still have a hard time understanding one another? Imagine then the miracle of Pentecost Day and what it means for us today. You see, God meets us in the collage of different languages and doesn't ask us to speak his language. God is like that. It's Instead, God chooses to speak our many tongues. God doesn't speak in a divine language beyond our comprehension. At Pentecost, God speaks in Aramaic and Greek and other ancient languages. Today, God continues to speak his gospel message in Spanish and Tamil and Thai and Swahili alike. At Pentecost, God makes his choice clear. God joins us in the midst of the messiness and the difficulties of speaking different languages, eating different foods, living in different cultures. That is good news indeed. The problems we face across cultures are not about our differences. Instead, when we mix those differences with sin and prejudice and rank, when our differences become a way to determine who is in and who is out, who is better, who is inferior, then we corrupt God's gift of wonderful variety. So we set aside the prejudices that infect our relationships with one another. They are poisons that only lead to hatred and destruction. But we also set aside the equally infectious, equally destructive delusion that our differences are a problem to be solved. That the solution to our many problems is a colorblind society. Check this out. I want to say that I am not a racist. I don't even see race, not even my own. People tell me I'm white and I believe them because I just devoted six minutes to explaining how I'm not a racist. Interesting. Such a dream of not seeing what God has made is just as harmful as rank prejudice for they both work on the same logic. It's better to be the same than to be different. For Christians, nothing could be further from the truth. God calls us out of our self-serving and fearful ways into a life of generosity and trust in God through Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. So what language does God speak? God speaks in every language. God is with us in every culture. God is with us in every way of life. The mission is to bring every culture to call on God's name in their own languages so that God can get the glory in the entire earth and we become united under God. That's the picture of heaven that God provides in the book of Revelation, that all nations, and the Greek words for nation is actually translated as ethnic groups. 
ethnic groups will be represented in heaven. That's God's vision of heaven, one in which all ethnic groups, or the Greek pantos ethnus, are gathered, not uniform, but united. God gathers us united in the word and around the body and the blood of the crucified and risen Jesus so that we can be sent and scattered into our communities, actual and virtual, to bring glory to God's name with all people. That is the point of the Pentecost, celebrating the abundant variety God has given in a unified way with the one and only gospel. That is the spirit of Pentecost. Amen. And now for the announcements. It is so good to be with you and share God's peace and hope with you. Again, for first-time visitors who are joining us, welcome. You're always welcome among us virtually and when we get together in person. If you're looking to God and the church these days for comfort, please do join us for reassurance and hope and keep joining us. Please don't let go of clinging to Christ or seeking for Christ. Visitors and all, please mark your attendance and share your prayer requests on the virtual welcome card in today's worship materials. That will help us to make our shared ministry as engaging and helpful and relevant and informed as possible. And please do put our prayer chain to work intercessing for you. The prayer warriors are ready, willing, and full of the Holy Spirit's power. The new weekly prayer meeting on Wednesday evenings got started a few weeks ago. Anyone is welcome. However, you will need to sign up for this gathering so that we can provide tech security for these gatherings. Please see the announcements on our web worship page and join this prayer huddle led by Henry Eichelberg, Ken Offelman, Laura Owens, and Virginia Benjamin. Life groups, clusters, Sunday school classes, other gatherings are also meeting online. Again, please see our news and announcements posted on our worship materials page and connect. We thank God for the beginnings of our newly constituted board of servant leaders. The board selected Jim Mixon as chair and Ted Lillistolen as vice chair. Josh Linder continues in his role as secretary. And we commend these servants to the Lord, tasked with special responsibilities on the board, and ask him to provide them wisdom, strength, and judgment, especially in these days and months to come. This week's upcoming midweek recharge is entitled, God Works in Good Times and Bad, Part 2. Uh, prayer and music will follow the devotion, plus a bit of singing from me. The midweek recharge, which has been receiving lots of participation, will continue in post-pandemic life, I would have been uh, felt very blessed with um, 100 views or 50 views, but these devotions are receiving so much participation. So our musicians, our production team, and I will continue at it. Speaking of post-pandemic life, you've been hearing much about the phases of reopening. The Good Shepherd Return to Campus Committee has started its work and is well on its way to formulating a considered and thorough plan. And as the committee works hard, the members, the Board of Servant Leaders, uh, the staff, and I ask for your patience, understanding, and charity. 
Here's a snapshot of what church leaders and I have been hearing and dealing with the past few weeks, not only here but in other communities of faith as well. That it's a huge health risk. You can't open this building at all. Or on the other side, what are you waiting for? Or here are the 497 things that you need to do if we want to meet in your building again. It's a big hoax, a conspiracy, etc. <laughs> Some passionate appeals and opinions on both sides from wanting to return yesterday to wanting to not return until the effective vaccine is at hand, administered and proven safe and efficacious. I understand and feel those passionate opinions and desires with you. The Return to Campus Committee has been recruited, mustered, prayed over, and charged. This group, chaired by Ken Uffelman, is planning to do a thorough job of considering, discussing, and charting out and sorting out various contingencies. There is no rush back to worship here at the facility, notwithstanding what the government has to say. Some congregations rushed back, as you may have heard. People got infected, a bunch of people. So we want to serve as a good witness to the careful care for all in the community. We will be thorough and thoughtful and sensitive. It is likely that some kind of hybrid model, including worship on campus and virtually, will be implemented. And once we return and get our ducks in a row, we will then devise a safe plan for di distributing communion as well. And once we do start the preparations for return, we will need many hands on deck to help us with getting the campus ready, the disinfecting, the cleaning, the rearranging, the going between services, lots of work to be done. And it's not just about the what of returning, but the how, in what way and form, and most of all, that we be understanding and charitable and forgiving in the midst of fear and anxiety and sickness and death and disorientation. Whether hybrid, virtual, in-person, or outdoors in worship and ministry, we give thanks to God for your continuing and considerable generosity in supporting the ministries of this congregation. In these days of economic uncertainty, you continue to reveal the faith in, with which the Lord has endowed you. You reveal that you believe that the resources in your hands are what you manage and steward, but are owned by our Lord, the great provider. That kind of attitude, charity, and faithfulness enables us to continue in God's mission in different ways with vigor and passion. In fact, during these weeks, we're sharing and extending the gospel beyond the walls of our church many-fold in historic numbers. No pandemic, no war, no wind, storm, snow, hail, sleet, video conferencing glitches, nothing will stop us from extending Christ's mission and God's kingdom with the power of the Holy Spirit. You and I are going to uh, continue caring for people, discipling, healing, continuing in mission, and engaging in the literal feeding of the needy through community service. But we won't stop at feeding folks with food. We're going to continue to feed them with the bread that is Jesus Christ, the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, the living stream of water, the Word made flesh who dwelt among us. We're going to feed people with food, but also feed them with the everlasting food that does not rot in eternity. Lest I stray into a second sermon regarding the bread of life, I'll pause here. You see, none of you are here to stop me from preaching a secondary message. I'm just hardwired to keep going unless someone stops me with a glare. Anyway, your generous hearts allow us to support our ministry efforts, including the all-important mission of our Lord here in our Jerusalem, our Samaria, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth, including Africa, where our deployed missionaries Krista and Joel Young and family are hard at work. And here's a video update from them now. 2019 kept us very busy as volunteers came and, came and went through East Africa. Twelve teams in total were able to serve and um, share God's love with the people here. Theological educators, medical mercy teams, conference leaders, child care teams that take care of missionary children, congregational teams that share evangelism and home visits, individuals who come and do things that they are gifted in, as well as agricultural consultants.
All of this shows us how much God is working powerfully in the lives of the people. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 3. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. That's exactly what happens when volunteers come to East Africa. They give praise to the Lord, we proclaim his name. Lives are changed and God moves in powerful ways. We're so thankful for all the partners, the congregations, the individuals, the local church leaders that allow us to work together, to walk with one another, to see God's glory and to proclaim his name. Now, as we join in the offering, we prayerfully consider a one-time gift or recurring gifts to enable the expansion of God's kingdom. If you haven't had an opportunity to sign up for online giving and are ready to do so now, please see the instructions on screen in a moment. You can also continue to give by text. That information will also be on screen soon or by mailing in your contribution. So let's take a bit of time now to consider giving prayerfully or to make your contribution now as we also lift up the musical offering, the anthem, unto the Lord.
We pray. Merciful God, our gifts do seem so small for the expansion of your mighty kingdom. But you make of them an abundance, just as you did with the five loaves and two fish, and just as you do with our very lives here on earth. You have fed us with your holy, powerful word, and our hearts burn and churn within us, especially on this Pentecost Sunday, for service and sacrifice and mission in your name. Receive our thanks and humble offerings. In the strength of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And now we continue our service with the prayers of this congregation. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities, languages, and vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, rain, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe during these days. We pray for all who long for comfort and healing, especially our own Leslie, Donna, Martin, Dale, David, and our friends and family requesting prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Help us to seek unity, not uniformity. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Encourage the nations and leaders to share their resources and provide wisdom to public officials and decision makers. Protect workers and families most vulnerable among us during these days, as many face difficult dilemmas between subsistence and safety. Provide hope to those furloughed, unemployed, or without health insurance. Bless the ministry that this congregation does through its coronavirus relief fund. Bless the efforts of our peacekeepers, first responders, military personnel, relief workers, and missionaries especially our own Erica, Patrick, Claire, Scott, Nate, Carter, Ellen, Jonathan, Matthew, Brian, Sarah, Bob, Yasmin, Mark, Megan, Krista, Joel, Alex, and Carson. Lord, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing and comfort to all the families whose loved ones have died or are suffering from the pandemic, as well as those suffering from mental health issues. Provide leadership for congregations that are now without church workers and pastors who have become infected and ill for a lengthy period. Safeguard those with underlying health issues. We especially pray for Denise Lenkowitz and Eric Rogers as they mourn the loss of Chip Lenkiewicz, their brother and friend who went to the Lord 
May 27th. Pour your Holy Spirit into his loved one's hearts and give them peace as we live in the mercy and hope of the resurrection. Put your healing touch on those infected, those awaiting test results, family members sequestered from their loved ones, those on the front lines treating patients, and the scientists and lab workers working night and day, despite their exhaustion, to develop accurate tests, safe vaccines, and effective therapeutics. Lord, continue your ministry through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, researchers, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, other health professionals, those who serve in the funeral industry, and all who tend to human bodies, many of whom put themselves in harm's way, including our own Barry, Alexia, Carol Lee, Chad, Sandra, Laura, David, Megan, Jennifer, and Errol. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those outside of our circles whom we meet virtually. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. Endow our return to campus committee wisdom, discernment, and strength as they plan our return to your house of worship. Provide all of us understanding of each other's opinions, cares, frailties, concerns, and needs as we plan our reopening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Acknowledging the sanctity and precious gift of life, we celebrate the birthdays this week of Stephen, Emma, Karen, and Kelly. May their birthday candles and their shared love as Christ followers be beacons of Pentecost light and hope in darkness, disease, and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We continue with the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the one who brought forth Jesus of Nazareth from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your anxiety and fear into joy and courage. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen and has ascended. Hang in there while sharing the good news using the innovative hearts and lavish talents God has given you. Alleluia. Hosanna. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.